Hi friends, welcome to the first video that I'm recording in 2023. Now I might post another video before this one goes live because this one's gonna take me some time to put together because I made a very, very big mistake. And because of that very, very, very big mistake, I now get to do the blog post and the video tutorial that is the most requested one that I get usually on a weekly basis. Let me tell you. If you are stumbling upon this channel for the first time because you're following Trim Healthy Mama for the first time, I want to say welcome. I think the Trim Healthy Mama lifestyle is the most sustainable way of eating that you will ever find and I, I just welcome you to this journey. I have a starter pack on my website that has recipes and a quick start guide to Trim Healthy Mama. You can click on that below this video and it will take you right to that. I hope that it's a helpful resource for you. One part of Trim Healthy Mama that sometimes gets really elevated and sometimes just gets lost and everything else is sourdough and fermentation. And I love sourdough and fermentation here at our healing home. And that leads me to the big, huge mistake that I made first mistake of 2023, I'm really bummed about it and it has to do with my sourdough starter. So in my sourdough recipes, I use a organic ancient grain flour called einkorn. And einkorn is just so great. Um, it's a, it, it has not been modified and GMO'd, I don't even think that's a word, but I'm gonna go with it. Like other grains, it has really stayed in its pure ancient form. So it's very good for you. It's great for sourdough. And I have an einkorn whole wheat sourdough starter that I've had for quite a few months now, and I ruined it. Now, usually I tell you guys that your sourdough starter is a lot more resilient than you think it is. You can have hooch or something that looks sort of like black mold, most likely it is not black mold, most likely it's hooch. And even if it's starting to smell a little bit more sour than you think it should smell, that's sour. Oh, and you also can have almost a smell like hairspray. And um, I, don't, I don't know, I've never had that, so I don't know exactly what the scientific process is that makes a hairspray smell. But do know you can have some really ridiculous smells with your sourdough and you still, your sourdough starter, and you still can save it. It's still gonna be very resilient. You, if you have that hooch and you know it's the hooch, you can either scrape it off, discard it, stir it all in, feed your sourdough, because hooch is usually indicative of the fact that your sourdough starter is probably hungry. You're not feeding it enough. So there's all sorts of ways to help your sourdough starter be more resilient and to keep it thriving. However, there are situations that your sourdough starter can go rancid. And that's what I did. And I did something um, that is such a rookie mistake. I forgot about my sourdough starter after I fed it. So it was during the Christmas week, the Christmas rush that I fed it. I put it on my shelf and I forgot about it. And I forgot about it for a long time. And I walked by yesterday and I went, Ooh, something doesn't smell right. But I had some other things to do, so I carried on with my day and I figured I'd deal with it today. I'm dealing with it today. I took it down and not only do I have mold on top, which is sometimes negotiable. Sometimes when you see mold on top, you can still scrape it off and um, preserve the sourdough starter. That's something that you're gonna have to research and really come to your own conclusions. I personally have had a thin layer of, of mold and I have scraped it off and I have fed it and revived it and I felt completely comfortable with that. It's thrived. However, this type of mold is something you can't mess around with. Let me show you. You will know if your sourdough starter has went bad by the absolute rancid smell that it has. This is not a sour smell, it is rancid. And as you can tell, everything looks dry in there, which, which happens with sourdough, but when you look inside of it, you are going to see mold, thick, thick mold, and this sourdough smells rancid. But the thing that is even more concerning, and I'm gonna show you, you actually can see it already, is 
this. This is called pink mold and you cannot mess around with pink mold. Once your sourdough starter has pink mold, it's time to throw it away, start new. You cannot save it, unfortunately. So I ruined my, um, my einkorn whole wheat sourdough starter. I'm really bummed. This whole thing has to get thrown away which means I can't make sourdough stuff for a while. And we're gonna be starting new with a new sourdough starter. So that pink mold, it, it's very dangerous. You don't wanna mess around with it. And it usually comes with, um, with a problem um, with your water. So I'm really going to be watching um, my water, making sure I get filtered water instead of ever using the tap water, which tap water, which I confess I have done a couple times. We do have filtered water here, so it really shouldn't be a problem. Um, I can use filtered water, and just just so you know that it usually is indicative of a water problem. Um, it's a bacteria that's that sometimes can get in your pipes, and then you get the pink mold. You can't mess around with it; it's time to throw away. Which leads me to the most requested blog post and video tutorial that I have received, and that is how do you make a whole wheat einkorn sourdough starter? Now there are some tutorials out there that um, that show you how to make a um, einkorn sourdough starter with all-purpose einkorn flour. Now I don't really have a problem with all-purpose einkorn flour, but on the Trim Healthy Mama plan. Um, it is encouraged to use that whole wheat einkorn instead of the all-purpose einkorn. It is just a more well-rounded um, food source. And so I really do try hard to use the whole wheat einkorn flour instead of the all-purpose. And I have noticed that my sourdough starter, because of that, is a little bit more needy. It is a little bit more hungry, which means you have to use a little bit more flour and you really have to watch how you balance your water versus flour ratio. Um, and so I just want you to know you can make an all-purpose einkorn flour. It's also gonna be cheaper than the whole wheat flour um, because whole wheat flour is very expensive. So I'm, I'm really bummed about this because this is a, actually a fairly spendy sourdough starter that I ruined. Um, and as I am making my new sourdough starter, it's going to be rather expensive to keep this one up too because you do need to discard um, some of your sourdough starter as you're building that bacteria up. So you're basically just throwing away rather expensive flour. Um, so it, it is really a bummer, but I do find, I, I do personally feel like it's worth having that rich whole wheat flour um, with my sourdough instead of something that is just, just less than that. So I am going to be showing you guys how to make a whole wheat einkorn sourdough starter. Um, so let's get going. So this is filtered water. I'm not going to make that same mistake twice. I have a clean mason jar and then this over here is my whole wheat einkorn that I'm going to be using to start my sourdough starter. So make sure that this is clean. What you're going to do is you're going to add one quarter cup of filtered water into your mason jar and one half cup of your einkorn flour. Now we're gonna stir that up. We're gonna scrape down the sides. And we are going to cover it and come back tomorrow. Now tomorrow what you're going to do is you are going to discard one half of this now it doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of eyeball it. Discard one half and then do the exact same process. Add one quarter cup of filtered water and then the half cup of uh, einkorn flour. Hi friends, so it is day two of my organic einkorn whole wheat sourdough starter. And I'm already also, I'm already seeing some bubbles in there. You can see that, which is great, but it can take four to five weeks to get a bacterial prep profile that is healthy enough to use it for baking bread. 
But by the end of this, about seven days, we'll be able to use the discard in other sourdough recipes. It's just that that bread is going to need a full bacterial profile to really get um, it fluffy and how bread should look. So just note that I'm going to follow the same step today as I did yesterday. I'm going to discard. Well, I didn't discard yesterday since it was the first day. So the second day, I'm going to discard half of it, and then I'm going to add one quarter cup of water and one half cup of einkorn flour. my einkorn whole wheat sourdough starter. It's actually a blizzard outside. Um, so we're stuck home for the day. So it feels really nice to just be doing some homemaking type things. Um, so on day three, I want to show you guys a close up of what this sourdough starter looks like. It is forming some wonderful, beautiful looking bubbles and it actually has doubled in size, which is great news. Um, maybe not quite doubled in size, but almost doubled in size. So it's very healthy. Now what I'm going to be doing um, from day two to day five is discarding half of it, adding one quarter cup of water and a half cup of whole wheat einkorn flour. But I do want to note, if you're using all purpose, stick with those um, ratios, one quarter cup water, filtered water to a half cup of einkorn sourdough starter. But if you are using the whole wheat sourdough starter, I want you to start taking note of what your um, sourdough starter looks like. And if you feel like it's getting too thick, I want you to reduce the whole wheat flour by about a tablespoon to maybe two tablespoons, which is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to take it down by one tablespoon and kind of see how it looks tomorrow. Whole wheat um, einkorn is a much denser flour, and so your um, so it's going to absorb um, more. Did I say that right? I think so. I sometimes get that confused. Um, more water and therefore you might need less um, of the flour. So we're going to discard half. We're going to add one quarter cup of filter water and roughly one half cup of einkorn flour, depending on if you're using all purpose or using whole wheat. Here is day four of the einkorn sourdough starter. It's looking very healthy. It's starting to double in size and there's lots of bubbles which indicate good bacteria growth. Two deer tonight. It's like two deer. Yes, we did. High five. High five. Good job. Good job. High five. High five. Hi friends, it is day eight of making my very own einkorn sourdough starter and I did use whole wheat with this. So it is a very nutrient dense sourdough starter and my sourdough starter is ready to start making sourdough recipes maybe even bread, um, but I'm not holding my breath for that. Sometimes it takes as long as four weeks to be able to make bread with a new sourdough starter. Now I was concerned about the work that it was going to take to make my own sourdough starter. And so if that's you where you're like, ah, I just don't want to go through the work. Let me tell you something. The sourdough starter that I killed, I actually purchased from, um, I purchased it from someone else and I have to say after making my own I completely regret it because this is so easy it's so simple it takes just a few minutes of work every single day and then you end up with a very sour smelling bubbly sourdough starter that you can use in your own recipes so again 
the recipe that I followed these entire seven days because it takes a minimum of seven days to get an active and bubbly sourdough starter with the proper bacteria. Um, and it kind of will take longer for some, especially if you do not have ferments in your home. Um, because if you have ferments in your home, you are going to have um, a sourdough starter that can feed off of the bacteria in the air faster and therefore make a healthier um, sourdough starter faster. And that's not gonna be the case with everyone, but that's just a general rule. Um, so if you have never had ferments in your home, it might take longer for you to get a healthy sourdough starter. If you have had ferments in your home, it might take a shorter amount of time. Therefore, I might be able to break bake bread earlier with this sourdough starter we're gonna we're gonna see um anyways it's very easy to make your own einkorn sourdough starter the um the recipe what i started to say a little bit ago and then i cut off and went on a rabbit trail let me come back from the rabbit trail and say the recipe that i followed for the entire seven days was a quarter cup of filtered water plus a half a cup of whole wheat einkorn flour. Now I've been doing this process on Instagram and I've gotten some questions and one of the most common questions that I've received is can I do this process with other flours? And the answer is yes, there's just gonna be tweaks that you're gonna make along the way depending on what kind of flour you're using. Um, if you are using a whole wheat einkorn flour, at around day three, you might wanna start lowering the amount of um, einkorn whole wheat flour that you're using by maybe a tablespoon at the most two tablespoons and that is because um, the sourdough or excuse me the einkorn the whole wheat einkorn is a denser flour therefore it is absorbing more water and so your ratio is just going to be a little bit off you are going to want a sourdough starter that is this that is around pancake batter consistency. So if you are not getting that pancake batter consistency, adjust your flours and water as necessary. So if you need some sourdough recipes to start making on your sourdough journey, head over to Healing Home to, uh, Healing Home Recipes .co and check out all my sourdough recipes. Happy sourdough baking, friends!